defense starting to exert its will. Welcome back to Five Star Matchup. If you like what we do, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash 5SMU to support the show for just four or seven bucks a month. Our hot starting Steelers shot out of the gates at the pace of a Little Caesars hot and ready, quickly climbing to a boisterous 3-0 before dropping the last pair as your boy was off getting married. But the good news is I'm back, and so are our winning ways. Enter Justin Strawberry Fields, the Steelers' maybe good, maybe not so good quarterback with the legs of a Greek god, and one must wonder. With Mr. Unlimited back to full speed, is it only a matter of time until Justin relinquishes his job? Not today, Satan. Start this one off with a dump off to the Najman, who I continue to be happy is involved in the pass game again, followed by another first down gash at the gut, and the Steelers are quickly across midfield. Toss underneath to the Moothman gets him close, and this lovely little option toss to Jay Warren converts, and is this a varied offense that's becoming difficult to prepare for? God, I hope so. Oh yeah, about that. Third and 15 might as well be third and 72, but that's okay because it's time to crack open that hyperbaric chamber and trot out the brass bald second longest tenured stealer. And you already know, Boz is. <laughs> jump in front three to nothing over to the men in black and its future journeyman aiden o'connell who will definitely never be good and will definitely have an occasional good game as a backup in 2029 it is written raiders get it moving with a toss and a chug as thoughts of bruce gradkowski dance through my head madison gashes him up the middle followed by a 10 yard gainer to the emerging star and former georgia bulldog brock bowers who was all over the place today and the raiders are moving because of course they fucking are more of the same here with a catch and run for the next big thing, Brock Bowers, followed by a toss outside the numbers to Madison, and the Raiders are donning their finest silver silks as they enter the business zone. No one keeps an eye on the former Vikings back sneaking out of the flat, and that's always a recipe for success in the red zone. He chugs and lugs it, not quite to the end zone, but close enough, and a couple plays later he hammers it home as the lowly Raiders take a 7-3 lead. Back to the Steelers, and what do you know, it's a run for minus four on first and 15. See, that's the right play call in that spot. 15 is hard to convert, but 19? 19 really lets you spread them out and get some different looks. Fields gets a few back, but on third and 12, it's Mr. Open f***ing always, who is open, but exhibits the slippery hands of a Dante Moncrief and drops an easy one. Probably would have been short of the sticks, but you know, maybe not the best look this week, huh? Tej and Jeremiah Moon, who? Get home quickly to rush the screen, and yes, Queen. Patrick sticks them for a loss. Love to see Pat Queen finally making some plays. The law firm of Benton and Watt swats this one out of the sky, and the Raiders' drive is deader than their non-existent Las Vegas fan base. Back to Strawberry and the Steelers, and it's a little play action out of the pistol. He waits and fires deep to the curious one, who, again, can't quite bring it in. This is a tough one, so I'm not going to go too hard on George, but woof, what a rough start to the game for the dramatic third-year man. Second and 10, no problem, though, and this is the shit I just can't get enough of. Whether you like him or not, want Russell Wilson or whatever, Fields' running ability is matched by maybe Lamar Jackson, and, uh, that's it? Inject these 15-yard QB runs directly into my eyeballs, please. And with that, we're already into the second quarter. Ah, so he can catch him. I wasn't sure because the eye black said he was always open, not I'll drop two and catch one, but what do I know? Third and three converts to the very same Georgie Porgy, and the Steelers are once again back across midfield. This feeling is so unfamiliar, a consistent offense. That's a phrase I haven't uttered in some six years. Najee again hits him with the ugliest and most violent 15 yard run you'll ever see in your life. And I think it's fair to ask, was this his best game as a pro? The stats don't jump off the page by any means, but man, did he look great today. Second and 10 though, and whoops! Fields momentarily forgets Pat Fryermuth isn't Manute Bull, and misses high followed by a duck of a prayer on third, and it's back over to the ice-blooded son of a bitch with a beautiful baby on the way. And you know this man ain't never missing a kick now. Might as well close your eyes. <laughs> money, 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 money. 
Steelers pull within one, seven to six. Look at Quiet Milk on the rush. You love to see it. Isaiah, if you ever watch this show, just know I'm only playing, man. Someone's gotta be the modern day Dan McCullers. Third and three and nope. Deshaun Elliott, who continues to be an absolute stud pickup for the Steelers, slams the door shut with a gorgeous wrap-up tackle, the likes of which any self-respecting football coach would slap your helmet and ass over, and it's right back over the Steelers' slowly simmering offense with a chance to take the lead. Oh yeah, just gotta highlight this real quick. Super genius and tiny wide receiver Calvin Austin is the master of deception. Watch him fake out the entire team to draw a touchback. Love when this works, and you can just see the other guys go, ah, f Another nice run for the Naj man, but it's coming back with a hold, setting up third and forever, which fields converts? All right, all right, if I may gush for a moment, this is a thing of beauty. Just the exact sort of play the Steelers haven't been able to pull off in half a decade now. Look at the way he scrambles, resets his feet, and fires a strike to CA3 for a chunk conversion. I looked it up because of this play, and if you're wondering, yes, Justin Fields was a middle infielder in baseball. Shows, doesn't it? Forget baseball, what was his race on the track? Dude ducks and runs for another gainer, and seriously, for anyone still in the bring in Russ camp, are you not the least bit interested in keeping these easy conversions in the fold? First and 10 and Strawberry slinging again, and ugh, oh so close. Fields fires a rope to a streaking Calvin who's just a half inch too short to pull it in. Very close to a 25 yard gainer. That's okay though, because second and 10 Art Smith pulls out the worst fuck play in the playbook, and it goes exactly like you might expect. I don't know what the hell this was supposed to be, but it sure as didn't work, and no one was open either, so yeah. Nice call, Art. And why on second? Totally unnecessary. Back to the Raiders, and I swear no one makes more plays from the backside than Trent Jordan Watt. I've reached the point where I could care less about pro football focus, talking heads, whatever. But I watch this dude every single week, and I have to tell you, he is the best defensive player in football, and I don't think it's particularly close. Raiders complete one for a first, and oh no. Is there a worse sight than number 39 going down? Nothing, and I mean nothing scares me more than a glue guy going down. Steelers without Minka are like early 90s SNL without Phil Hartman. It just doesn't work. Luckily, he'd be fine. Hopeless attempt for the Raiders goes nowhere, and oops! It's Trent Jordan Watt looking like prime Iron Mike with the brutal punch out to turn it over for the boys in white. Would you just look at this freaking punch? Just a thing of beauty for Trentavious. Now it's time to capitalize with the half ticking down. Crucial third and four, Field stands in under pressure and quack! Chucks an ugly duckling right to the middle backer who literally never moved, but wait, there's some shit. The drive, and possibly Fields' job, is saved by one of those roughing the quarterbacks where the guy landed on him too much, I guess? Now I'll take it, but what are we doing here, folks? Dude's a 6'3 beast running all over you and you're supposed to take him down lightly? I don't know what defenders are supposed to do anymore, but hey, whatever, F the Raiders, let's get some points. First and 10, Fields wades through traffic like a Miata with the top down and scampers for a handful, setting up a third and two for the hammer, Najee, who comes up short setting up a monumental fourth and one that the Steelers go for without hesitation. And it's just unstoppable. I know there's always gonna be the I want a pocket passer types, but man, in today's game, you gotta have this in your arsenal. There's a handful of QBs in the world that can get this edge and Fields is one of them. I don't care if they're running or passing, the kid's got 10 touchdowns in six games. That's a hell of a lot better than the last dude we had, isn't it? Steelers go drop back pass for the two. I don't get it, and neither do they. Side note, would have had a wide open Van Jefferson if he looked at him, but much like the rest of us, he probably forgot he existed. Still, Steelers jump out to a 12 to seven lead as we prep for the half. Raiders conjure up a chance at a Hail Mary, and just like the Immaculate Reception, it doesn't go their way. Go grab some orange slices and pretzel rods because we're headed into the half. Hey you, I know you dig the show or you wouldn't be here. You know YouTube makes this show extremely difficult to run. If you want us to keep growing in our 60s, then make sure you head over to patreon.com slash 5SMU and join us for just four or seven bucks a month. You get some cool goodies and access to our Discord server, which is electric during games. Do it now. Now roll the game. Onto the second half, and look, I know you've already seen the final score. Does that mean I'm about to do some actual highlights? Okay, TJ, that man had a family, but I guess you didn't care, and why should you? Another nice stick by Elliot keeps him short of the sticks, but even a broken clock is right twice a day, and O'Connell converts on third. First and 10, the mustachioed sophomore stands in under extreme duress and finds his man for a chunk, but wait! 
The Raiders have only begun to shoot themselves in the foot, face, heart, and more. This one's coming back. Third and 17 might as well be fifth and 26, and it's over to the Strawberry Steelers with a chance to take control. Waxing, waning, whatever. It's Jeremiah Full Moon with the complete and total block. I mean, he literally could have tackled the punter, he was so close. Someone get Danny Smith a fresh pack of double bubble because I know that motherfucker over there chomping with glee right now. Oh good, a backwards pass in the red zone, nice. Disaster momentarily averted and on third and goal from the 15, Fields waits, scrambles a yard past the line of scrimmage and fires somehow both to Van Jefferson and Pat Fryermuth for an almost touchdown. That is, if the rules of the forward pass hadn't been hammered out 90 years ago or whatever. Oh well, at least there's always the Wizard of Boz who couldn't miss if he tried. <laughs> You know, it's starting to get a little chilly out there, folks, so make sure you pack a beanie. Nice play by the embattled rookie to stuff this one for a loss. Raiders are again hopeless on third, and this one just has the feel of a blowout waiting to happen, doesn't it? Now, I'm not gonna just gush over everything Justin Fields does. Wait, yes I am. Would you look at this balletic throwaway? Shades of a young Benjamin the Large, no? Second and 10 tote goes to the Najman and what? Cut of the career for young Mr. Harris, who breaks this guy's head, shoulders, knees, and toes on the way to one of his speediest runs ever. I know this Raiders D ain't world beaters, but man, Nas just looked like a different player today. Love to see it. Makeshift O-line gonna makeshift O-line though, and Fields has nowhere to go but down. Third and 18, they take an easy little dump off for a few and prep to punt. But wait, the Raiders are now just pulling their own teeth out of their head one by one. Another roughing saves the Steelers drive, and onward we go. Harris gets a rough and tumble toed up the gut, but sadly rookie center and future All-Pro Zach Frazier goes down with an ankle and wouldn't return. He was walking around and trying to get back in, so hopefully it's not too serious, but still, the injuries are killing this O-line. Who needs an O-line though? Toss this one to the Najman who sifts through traffic and comes out with a full head of steam. He could go all the way. Touchdown Najee Harris, who is this speed demon out there today? Was Najee forgetting to cash in his skill progression points until today? Maybe the best run of his NFL career so far, and that's filed firmly on the top of the pile of things you love to f***ing see. Back to the Raiders, and of course they gotta be annoying for a little longer. O'Connell completes a deep one, and they're on the move. Next play though, glorious takedown from Dante Don't Call Me Deontay Jackson, who continues to impress with every aspect of his game, especially these physical tackles. Raiders catch him with a screen and a run to get him into the red zone as time ticks away in the third. Time ticks to zero as they run a play anyway. By the way, this was even reviewed and they said it wasn't at zero. It totally was. And O'Connell finds Madison for the score to pull within punching distance. Oh, but wait, I guess the Raiders still had some toes left to shoot. Just a brutal penalty that I think is probably again pretty ticky tack on the illegal man downfield but it wipes the score as we head into the fourth and final stanza. Second and goal, the shifty Abdullah gets him close again, and that sets up our five star. Play of the game. There, third and goal, shotgun, O'Connell give, Abdullah. Oh, he lost it! The Steelers have it, Abdullah coughs it up! Trent Jordan Watt. In a game where you knew his pass rush would be tough playing opposite practice squad, guys, the eater of worlds, TJ Watt, punches out his second forced fumble of the day and completely ends all hope for the bumbling Raiders. Happy birthday, Tej. Second and nine fields finds Mount Washington, who's nearly impossible to climb, giving him some space and a first. And on second and 13, it's another scramble for QB1 and RB2, as Justin grabs an easy chunk to make it convertible. And convert he does. Is Calvin Austin ascending? Penalty knocks him back and Fields skips one on third, but the damage is done and the field position flipped. The Raiders are officially on life support. Great tandem pressure by Full Moon and Godzilla Hayward takes AOC down, and can you hear that? Those are the turnover bells are ringing. Man, is Cam looking rejuvenated this year, or what? He's been phenomenal. Nothing you love more than an inexperienced quarterback throwing on third and forever from his own end zone, and boom. It's Dante Jackson going up and getting it to officially end any and all chance of the Raiders making this a fight. Great pick on a terrible throw, I'm just sad he couldn't get it to the house. Deontay for Dante trade continues to pay off wonderfully. 
What in the Mike Malarkey is this? Beautifully designed quarterback run by Art Smith makes an easy touchdown for Strawberry Fields, his second of the day. And don't look now, but your Pittsburgh Steelers are officially blowing out the Raiders. Man, oh man, am I hyped for these quarterback runs. They're just unstoppable this close to the end zone. And once teams do start to dedicate themselves to it, the passing touchdowns will open up. I know Fields hasn't been perfect, but the Steelers really might have stumbled back asswards into something beautiful here. Strawberry Fields forever. Raiders dink and dunk versus prevent, blah blah blah. Eventually they face a fourth and two and get it. But they miss the two, and with just five minutes left, go on sides and don't get it. Steelers take over with nothing to do but grind it out, and whoa, they go play action pass deep to George Finger Pickens, who's strumming an old banjo inside the five. Nice catch, but maybe could have been a touchdown with a better throw. But at this point, who's counting? Well, probably Mr. Always f***ing Open, who I hope can count to the number of drops he's had the last two weeks, because I certainly can't. Dreams of 36 points dance through my head, but the Steelers sadly can't punch it in. Boz trots out one more time to pad the stat sheet and say it with me. Your Pittsburgh Steelers are four and two. Oh, what a glorious day it is to blow out a team in their own house. As I write this, the Steelers are, believe it or not, number one in point differential in the AFC. While that's obviously heavily weighted by this game, I'm not taking that lightly. This team is a bad snap and a fourth down stop away from being 5-1 or 6-0 right now. Obviously the Raiders aren't the toughest of tests, but winning the games you're supposed to win without much drama is the first step to being a great team. The 2024 Steelers so far look night and day better than the 2023 version, and while part of it is the defense, part of it is the OC, the biggest part of it is Justin Strawberry Fields who continues to play mistake free and impactful football. He's calmly leading this offense down the field and capitalizing on red zone opportunities, something they've struggled with mightily in the post Roethlisberger era. He scored 10 touchdowns in six games, while the Steelers' merry-go-round quarterback room accounted for just 16 over the full 17 game season last year. If you don't see the positive difference there, I don't know what to tell you. Am I sold on Justin Fields being the Steelers' quarterback of the future? I don't know, maybe. I'm getting there, but am I sold on him being the Steelers quarterback for next week and the week after? I sure as hell am. This team is really starting to click, and next Sunday night against Aaron Rodgers and the Jets is their first serious AFC test. Can they keep moving in the right direction? Can they score 30 plus for two weeks in a row? Can Justin Fields continue to almost never turn it over? Only one way to find out. See you next week. Here. We. Go. And if you're still here, that means you are a strong candidate to join our Patreon. It's really the best way to support the show and most importantly, get you access to our private group chat on Discord, which is a blast. People are arguing about Mike Tomlin and Bill Cower as I write this. They never shut up, but I love them. Join today, patreon.com slash 5SMU.